Good try, team. Let's regroup and try again next round. Just because we lost pistol round, that doesn't mean we lost the game. Don't worry, Brimstone. I'm buying a Vandal this round and will win us the round. Cypher, how the hell do you have a Vandal? Why are you saving credits on round one, you stupid? Ah, uh, yes. I saved all my credits on pistol round. Man, this AI voice generator thing is kind of crazy. I mean, it isn't like perfect, but that sounded pretty decent. Okay, AI voice programs aside, that little skit that I put on actually affects a lot of people in lower elos. Players have their own rules to buying, like sometimes full saving on some rounds, forcing on others, and imaginary rules like these are actually losing you games. Your economy, believe it or not, is arguably the most important part of the game. And if that isn't right, nothing else will be. Let's talk about it. And if economy management isn't your issue, maybe something else is. You could be struggling with your game sense, mechanics, or maybe you're just looking for a name routine. We can help you with all these things. Just ask Brimstone. Teats ain't lying. With their radiant produced content, ask a pro channel in their discord, and hundreds of hours of VOD reviews, they can help anyone at any rank. Hey, you just heard it from Mr. Valorant himself. So let us help you and check us out at Skillcaps. We'll be waiting. Let me start with this. On Pistol Round, you need to be spending as many credits as possible. Don't hold back on a smoke or another piece of utility, and especially don't full save. These two rounds are the most important rounds of the game. They dictate how the other rounds are going to play out, so you want to make sure you're maximizing your chances to win it. Listen to what I told the student that I was coaching. Pistol Round is the most important round in the game. If you win Pistol Round, one, you won a round and you're already up, two, it ensures you almost a guaranteed second round win because you guys have the better weapons, you have more utility, you have armor, right? And they're still stuck on classics. And then around three, you could potentially damage their economy because they're on full buys. You're like on those like bonus buys. You're bonusing the guns from round two, right? So round one, you have pistols and then you win. And then round two, you use your, your specters and full armor, right? And then round three, you bonus your guns from round two. So pistols, specters, bonus right because you're, you're taking whatever guns you have left from round two you're carrying it over into at round three like the extra credit round the enemy has like vandals and stuff right but you want to do as much damage to them as possible so that around four they have to buy more and more and more so their economy is weak while yours is strong this all comes down to winning pistol pistol round is the most important round in the game for that reason because it sets the tempo for the rest of the game now, there aren't any hard rules in Valorant, but for now, it's a good idea to stick to this formula. If you lose pistol round, this is what your next few rounds should look like. You full save on round two, don't buy anything. And on round three, you use all your saved up credits and make sure you can buy everything you possibly can all of your utility, full armor, and make sure you're doing everything in your power to win this round. If you don't get it, you'll get knocked on another eco and risk putting yourself in a big hole. You need to win round three if you lose pistol round. But if you win pistol round, you should full buy round two instead. Buy your abilities, a half buy weapon, and full armor. This is a must win round if you won pistol round. Then on round three, you use your weaker weapons you just bought to do as much damage as possible to the opposing team who have rifles. This is what people mean when they say things like that was a good eco that means that you successfully used your bad weapons to do a lot of damage to the team with a full buy you force them to rebuy armor weapons and abilities on round four it's important that you do as much damage as possible on these eco rounds so that the enemy's economy stays in check and they don't have endless amounts of money but what about the rest of the game? Well, this is pretty straightforward. You're going to want to make sure that your team's economy is all on the same page. This means buying similar loadouts at the same time. Have another listen to my coaching session. Your teammates buying full buy, full armor, full buy, full armor, full buy, full buy, full buy, full buy, and you are going to be stuck on a, a specter, or I think you buy an Ares and a half shield. The economy in this game, the economy, meaning the amount of credits that your team has, the amount of credits that your team has is the most important part of this game. Um, because if you guys don't have good weapons, you're not going to win a lot of rounds. You could have the best strat in the world. You could be like the biggest brain fake, dooly, hooly, dooly, whatever it is, right? But if you don't have guns to pull off that strat, it's never going to work, right? It doesn't matter. So you always want to make sure that your team can always be buying these full buys right and a full buy is a rifle uh, an assault rifle phantom vandal armor util but it seems like if your team is on a constant disarray of buys like right here you're buying a specter and half armor let's say for example he's buying a vandal then sky buys like a, a bucky and a, a or a judge in half armor and then he buys a phantom and then neon buys a, a bulldog and a half armor as well the inconsistency in the weaponry is going to show in the amount of rounds that you win right because 
if you were the if only like one or two people have the good weapons, those are the only people that have a good chance at winning the round for your team, if that makes sense, right? You make sure that you you can buy with your team, that you have the same amount of credits as them. If they're buying like, you know, sheriffs and light armor, right? You should buy like sheriffs and light armor. Like I mentioned, your team could have the most perfect reads in the world, but if you don't have the tools to execute the strat, what's the point? It's like if a sculptor had this idea for a beautiful statue, but if they don't have a chisel, I mean, what are they gonna do? If your team's economy is out of whack, sometimes it is a good idea to save a round just to make sure everyone is on the same page next round. Now, this issue is amplified tenfold on defense. Let's say two people on your team have specters or sheriffs and the other three have vandals. By doing this, your team is unintentionally leaving gaps in your defense. If attackers decide to push into these players with the low eye weapons, they have a low chance of being able to fend off the push. Then what happens is that the other players have to clean up the mess and are at a disadvantage. But this economy misbalance isn't as bad on offense, but it's still an issue. If your team is defaulting, you can cycle the weapons amongst each other. The person with the rifle dies, and then their teammates can pick up the guns. You can't do this on defense because usually everybody's spread pretty thin. Now, this is a pretty viable strategy if you find yourself on a full buy, your whole team dies, and the next round you're going to be on an eco, so you decide to save. Saving is basically staying alive, letting the timer run out, and making sure you have a weapon for next round. By doing this, you can juggle this one weapon and give yourself a greater chance into the next round. But as a general rule of thumb, your team should always be on the same buy. Now, despite these rules, teams still find ways to bend them and create viable strategies. While it might be admittedly hard to pull some of these off with your random ranked teammates, they're still good to know with this premier tournament mode coming out. A good example for one of these economy strategies is that Navi love to force Vandals after they win Pistol. And no, they don't do what your ranked Reyna does and lurk with them or run it down mid. They actually have thought behind how they're using these rifles. After they win round one, their buy looks like two Vandals, a Guardian or Bulldog, and they keep two Pistols from the previous round. What this does is that it allows two of their teammates to die and still pick up weapons for the next round. Then on round three, they have a really strong buy and can contest the enemy's full loadouts much better than Spectres would. The enemy then has to work harder for this theoretical easier round. Fnatic's also been doing a strategy that's been experimented with for a bit now, and it's caused a bit of controversy. What they do is that they'll only buy half armor, but why? Well, the headshot damage on the Vandal is 160 at any range, and they know that a majority of players are only using the Vandal. So regardless of the armor they have, they're going to get one tapped. Not only that, but the difference between half shields and full shields is 600 credits. And over the course of an entire half, they're able to squeeze out a couple extra buys when they're supposed to be on an eco round. They did this throughout the entire Sao Paulo lock-in event, they won that event, and are now world champions. So there's gotta be some truth behind this strat, right? I mean, it must work. In this game, Fnatic had a 9-5 lead, but then skidded and let Navi win three straight rounds in a row. Theoretically, they need to save this round, since they just lost three rounds. But because they bought half armor all game, they're able to squeeze out this one more buy round. And because of this strategy and the rifles they had, they won and were able to build some momentum and eventually take the map. Again, this type of buy might be hard to coordinate with your entire team, but it's something worth mentioning or saving for your team for when this tournament mode comes out. Now, something I haven't mentioned yet is that ultimates play a big factor in how your team should buy. Jet's Bladestorm, Neon's Overdrive, Chamber's Tour de Force, and Raze's Showstopper all allow you to use your credits differently. If you have any of these ultimates online and your teammates need a buy, you should purchase a lower tier weapon and give them the rifle. These ultimates are essentially weapons and should be treated as a Phantom or a Vandal. Use these abilities to make a play and let your teammates follow up with the rifles. Another way you can use your ultimates is that they can give you an excuse to force on a save round. Let's say that you're one or two points off your ultimate and your team is saving. What you can do is buy a Vandal this round and allow your team to share the weapon. Maybe you get an orb, you kill one, then you die, and then boom, next round you have your ultimate. And then when that next round comes, your team is ready to buy, they have rifles, you only have a Stinger or a Sheriff, but at least you have a game-changing ultimate. So hopefully by now you have a better understanding of how the economy in this game works. Your credits are the most important part of the game, and knowing how to manage them will give you a leg up in any situation. So communicate with your teammates, make sure everybody's on the same buy, and you'll see your teams consistently consistently win more rounds. Anyways, if you guys enjoyed the video, be sure to drop a like and subscribe to the channel down below. It really does help us out. Now, maybe you're a responsible buyer and know how to balance a budget. Your issue could be something completely different, and our job at Skillcapped is to help you find out what that is. A lot of low elo players think that they 
know what they aren't good at, but they don't. With a subscription to our site, you get access to our Ask a Pro channel in our Discord, where you can set up a VAR review with one of our coaches. Here is where you'll discover your strengths and weaknesses. No other service can offer you this much value, I promise. Now head on over to skillcap.com and get started on your way to that rank that you deserve. And yeah, that's it. Thanks for listening, guys. I'm Teets, and we here at Skillcap want to thank you all for watching, and we'll catch you guys in the next one. Take care.